My name is Ammon Bundy. I'm the third son of Cliven Bundy. I prepared this video for a couple reasons. One is a lot of people have asked me about the direction this country is going and what I feel is the main concern that we should be worried about. Also, I offer this video to you as a, as a warning, um, a warning of what may come if we do not correct the things that are happening. The federal government has not been given authority by the people to act the way they are. Most of the acts of Congress over the last 50 years have not been authorized by the people. Federal agencies are ramping up military-like forces to compel the American people into abiding by their codes. And the Supreme Court continually rules on matters that they do not have jurisdiction over, forcing the states into undue obedience. I would like to briefly cover the purpose in which the people organized the federal government, what authority the people gave the federal government, and how federal agencies today are the greatest threat the American people have ever faced. Before the federal government was created, the states had existed for several years. The states were doing well inside their borders. The people were thriving and enjoying their newfound freedoms. Economics were good, morale was high, and general social ethics were honored. However, when it came to matters outside the state, such as trade with other countries, disputes between two or more states, the defense against other nations, or the expansion and growth of the country, the current system was weak. Without an orderly system to handle these matters, the state surely would begin fighting amongst each other, and possibly even be conquered by an outside force. In 1787, 11 years after the American people declared independence from King George III, the state's delegates came together in Philadelphia to discuss how they may resolve the concerns involving the unity of the states. The weakness of the current system was defined as fourfold. One, foreign trade. Two, resolving conflicts between states. Three, defense of the states from foreign threats and the proper way to grow and expand. Over four months and through much deliberation, a simple one-page document with seven articles was drafted to resolve these problems. We know this document as the United States Constitution. In this document, it proposed that the states create a federal government, a central government, or a general government, and delegate these four main responsibilities to it. Matters of foreign trade, an appeals court between two or more states, matters of national defense, and matters of growth and expansion of the nation. The document made it very clear to how the federal government would be organized and was very specific to what authority and responsibility the people were delegating to this government. When the state's delegates presented the Constitution to the people, many were very concerned that it would give the proposed central government too much power. The delegates assured the people through many written and verbal communications that the Constitution was drafted to only give very specific power to the federal government, only enough power to perform the specific duties listed. Virginians and New Yorkers were so concerned about the Constitution creating a central government that would dissolve the state's power and put them back in the situation they just fought against that they resisted ratifying the Constitution until amendments were promised to be added. Amendment 1 through 10, known as the Bill of Rights, was added to make it clear that the people were not giving the federal government power to make rules or regulations on just anything. Amendment 10 alone reads that if it is not listed in the Constitution, then the federal government does not have authority from the people to be making laws or acting on it. The people through the Constitution gave the federal government authority to act for one, international trade, national defense, including border security, serve as an appeals court so two or more states can resolve conflicts, administer acquired or conquered land until the land becomes a state, along with a few other listed responsibilities such as post offices. Beyond these, they have not been given authority from the people or the states. Beyond these, the states and therefore the people have reserved the power to themselves. For example, let's look at our schools. Where in the Constitution does it list the federal government's authorization to administer and regulate education? It does not. Where in the Constitution does it list the federal government's authority to administer and regulate the environment? It does not. 
Where does it list the federal government's authority to own or control mass amounts of land inside the state? It does not. And where does it list the federal government's authority to administer and regulate public health and safety? It does not. So I ask you this question. If the federal government does not have authority from the people to be acting the way they are, then with what authority are they acting on? Can the legislative, executive, or judicial branches of the federal government act on anything or on everything? Can Congress make acts of law for anything they desire? Can the executive branch administer on any regulation they wish? Can the Supreme Court rule on every matter? Have the people given them authority to do this? And if not, then by what authority are they acting on? When people in government go rogue and begin to act on their own, outside the power the citizens have given them, that government becomes very dangerous to the people. When people in government, bureaucrats, assume they can regulate on anything and on everything, then that is exactly what they do, and the liberties of the people are taken away. When the people push back, and they always do, the bureaucrats view those pushbacks as a threat to their power. And in almost every case in history, they begin to murder their own people. Over 170 million people in the 20th century alone have been murdered by people in their own government, after these governments achieved unchecked authority. The founders understood this danger. They listed very clearly what the federal government has authority to do, and beyond these, no power was or has been given. We American people are in a very precarious situation whether we acknowledge it or not. We have a U.S. Congress that legislates acts for anything, acts that protect plants over people, putting citizens in prison for accidentally stepping on them, acts that can land you in jail for using the wrong light bulb, acts that force you to get health insurance or be fined and eventually imprisoned, acts that regulate the loud temperature you can keep your home. The list goes on and on and is added to in every session. The majority of the acts of Congress today are illegal. They do not fall under the enumerated responsibilities the people delegated to them, and they break the constituted agreements between the states and the federal government. However, as bad as Congress may be, the executive branch is by far worse. They take these acts of Congress and manipulate them into anything they wish. They file in the Federal Registry codes that, in their view, are federal law making these already unauthorized acts of Congress into tools to give federal agencies unlimited power. With military-like force, they come down upon the American people and threaten them with compliance to their codes, none of it authorized by the people. These agencies have found a way to create their own laws without the people's elected representatives. Over the past several decades, they have been organizing their own law enforcement regiments, building their own prison systems, and appointing their own judges. With this fraudulent system, they can arrest, prosecute, and incarcerate the American people for non-compliance to their arbitrary rules. All of this is done outside the proper legal system sanctioned by the people, making it futile for the American people to get justice when caught in this counterfeit judicial system, and making it feasible for bureaucrats to embezzle, abuse, oppress, incarcerate, and even murder the American people without afterwards even as much as an investigation. The American people are in a very precarious situation. To sum things up, the people created the federal government to perform specific duties that were better performed by a central government. The people gave the federal government authority to only perform those certain duties. The U.S. Constitution lists those certain duties. The federal government has neglected those duties and U.S. Congress, with no respect for the people, are making acts way outside the list of authorized duties. Current and past presidents have created hundreds of federal agencies that have nothing to do with the listed responsibilities. And now these federal agencies have become so powerful that not even Congress or the president can rein them in or defund them. These bureaucrats today understand that the American people are becoming weary to their actions. They are building up forces so they can stay in power when the American people finally realize that they are no more than modern-day conquerors, just self-appointed predators. Now two questions. 
Are law-abiding citizens obligated to obey unauthorized laws, codes, or regulations? And is it the duty of the citizen to make sure people in government only exercise on the authority given them? To present such gloomy information without some solution would not seem honorable. Yes, the above facts are alarming and extremely concerning. History is repeating itself. But there is a way that we can protect our liberties from the buffetings of these bureaucratic bullies. It is not easy, but I have personally seen it happen successfully several times. One of the founding principles that this nation was built upon is the right to local self-government and the protection of it. Federalism by doctrine means that each level of government checks and balances the other levels. When any level of government begins to act outside the authority that people have given it, it is the right and the duty of the people and other levels of government to put that government back in its place. As a prudent society, we have been wielded into thinking that the way to check and balance government is through the courts. This is simply not true for many reasons. The only way to ultimately check and balance and preserve liberties is by not allowing the action to continue. Federal, state, counties, and most important, the people must not comply under any circumstance to legislation or regulation that violates the constituted agreements made with each other. We have found ourselves in this precarious situation because either we are ignorant to the constituted outlines or we are not brave enough to stand when we know something is not right. What the federal government is doing is illegal and will continue to destroy our freedoms until there are none left. The people must not stand for it. We have been the land of the free because of the brave. And if we do not exhibit bravery, suppressing fear, we cannot be free. This is an eternal principle. It is time for you to organize those around you and insist that your state, your county, your schools, and your city, and yourselves do not comply to the illegal arbitrary action of the federal government. As you do this from time to time, you may have to rely on the people for protection. As my father, Cliven Bundy, says, come home, America. Take care of your county where you can make a difference. Stop worrying so much about who is running for president or for Congress. They are nearly all lost to the people. It is time to elect county sheriffs and commissioners that are brave enough to check and balance all other governments when they try to take the lives, liberties, and properties away from the citizens. If this is done correctly, we may enjoy freedom a little longer and possibly even pass it on to our children. Rights are not protected in the courts. In fact, they are usually diminished there. Rights are protected on the grounds that they were established. Remember, you cannot expect your sheriff to defend your rights when you are not willing to defend them yourselves. If you are concerned about the direction this country is going and would like to do something about it, there are others in your area that feel the same. Please go to the link below to be contacted with them. Thank you.